We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the country where this video is filmed and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples should be aware that this video may contain the images and voices of people who have passed away. Create a welcoming environment at your clinic with a symbol to show that your space is inclusive, such as displaying the Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander flags. Undertake workplace cultural awareness training and promote that your clinic or health service has done so on your website or other locations. Individual staff members and practitioners could also display their certificate of attendance in their offices or consulting rooms so that clients can see they are speaking with a person who will maintain their cultural safety. It's important to spend time yarning with your clients to build rapport and trust, as well as understand the barriers they may face to participating in cancer screening. Shame, fear and embarrassment about talking about cancer or fearing a lack of cultural sensitivity may be a barrier. Preface sensitive questions to allow your clients to prepare mentally and emotionally before responding. For example, you might say, I need to ask you some sensitive questions about your health today. I need to ask these questions as part of our regular health checks to make sure that I can support you to stay deadly with your health. Observe body language and facial expressions that indicate the information has not been fully understood and rephrase comments or questions if needed. Avoid using jargon, rushing and asking too many questions all at once. Help clients to understand that their information is kept private and all conversations are confidential. Respect the cultural sensitivities around men's and women's business by asking clients whether they would prefer to see a male or female health worker. Cancer screening questions are part of the 715 health check for people aged 50 and over for bowel, breast and well women's checks and for women aged 25 and over for well women's checks. Cervical cancer rates in Aboriginal women could be as much as double the rates of those in non-Aboriginal women. Cervical cancer is preventable. Cervical cancer affects more Indigenous women than it does non-Indigenous women. To help prevent cervical cancer, there is a new test called the Cervical Screening Test, which replaced the old pap test. The Cervical Screening Test, sometimes known as Well Women's Checks, looks for a virus that may cause changes to your cells. If these changes are left unchecked, it may turn into cervical cancer. This is why it's important that women aged 25 to 74 have the test every five years or two years after their last pap test. Uh, my name is Dr Anapurna Nori. I'm one of the two public health medical officers at the Aboriginal Health Council of uh, South Australia. By training, I am a public health physician as well as a GP and I've worked for many years, close to 20 years now in Aboriginal health. So in regard to cervical cancer, Again, this is an area where we do need to close the gap. So cervical cancer affects Aboriginal women at twice the rate that it does non-Aboriginal women. And on the flip side, Aboriginal women participate less in cervical cancer screening than non-Aboriginal women. So the cervical cancer test is offered to women between the ages of 25 and 74, and it's done every five years. Women have a couple of options. Uh, the option that they will be familiar with is that a cervical screening test would be done by a health professional, whether it's a nurse and midwife who's had the training to do that, or a doctor. There is now an additional option that is also available, which is a self-collection, which means the woman can actually do the test on herself. Now, for many women, this might be a good option, particularly if they're feeling very uncomfortable or embarrassed. Uh, about the procedure or if they've had uh, difficulty previously when they've had the test done, it is a good option. They can do it in the privacy of the clinic room itself if they're given the curtains are drawn and they have that privacy or they can go to a toilet and do it. The currently um, 
The women who can be offered a self-collection are women over the age of 30 who either have been or are sexually active and if they've not had a cervical screening test or they're overdue for their pap test, which it, which it used to be, for, for four or more years. So if a woman over the age of 30 comes to your clinic, uh, she is sexually active or has been sexually active, has not had cervical cancer screening for the last four years and would like to do it differently, you could offer her um, the self-collection kit. It's like a long cotton bud um, and uh, basically she inserts it into her vagina uh, and then she comes back and gives it to the nurse or the doctor. Uh, for people who want to know more about it, you could look up SA Health Self Collection and uh, click on the link to the health provider, uh, which will then walk you through what's involved. Uh, it's important to know which pathology providers do support that. Not all pathology providers do. The forms are also different, the kits are different. So if your service wants to offer self-collection, then make sure you've got all the information, all of the, uh, the kits and, um, and uh, equipment available to you to do that. The other thing is that uh, in discussing a cervical cancer screening, use every opportunity that you can, and there are so many. Uh, as part of the general health check, which is the MBS item 715, if a woman comes and she's concerned about whether she's got a, uh, an infection, if she comes saying that she's got a vaginal discharge, uh, if she comes because she just wants to talk about women's health, whichever options a woman provides you, use that as an opportunity to offer or talk about cervical cancer screening. Another thing uh, that's really useful is to let them know what they can expect when you're doing the actual test and also when somebody might expect the results to be back and how your service deals with results. So my way, and this is just my way, is I say to women, if you don't hear from me, over the next couple of weeks, so I'm expecting that the results will come back in a week, maybe two weeks. If you haven't heard from us and the clinic by the end of two weeks, you can assume that the test is normal. If you really want to know, ring up the clinic and I usually will authorize the nurses to say, please give the, the, the test result to the person who's contacted. If, however, the test is abnormal, I will contact you. So if you get a phone call from the clinic to say the doctor would like to see you, um, it is because it is an abnormal test result. I also let them know that an abnormal test result does not mean cancer. An abnormal test means exactly that. There's an abnormality that we found on the test result and we need to discuss this with you further. Please also remember that all cervical screening test results are sent to the National Cancer Screening Register. Just the way when we do immunizations, we upload it to the uh, Australian Immunization Register. When we do cervical cancer screening and the pathology labs do send those results on to the National Cancer Screening Register. And the register does some amazing stuff and one of it is that they will send a woman reminders if they're overdue for the cervical cancer screening. So in order for that to happen, it's important that the woman's contact details are up to date. So apart from all the other reasons that you're told about why someone's contact details need to be up to date, this is another really important reason because cancer prevention is really important for the health of all women, especially Aboriginal women. For more information about the National Cervical Screening Program, visit ncsr.gov.au.